Dick Grayson's life in Bloodhaven is about to change forever, and this brings old friends and new villains into the fold. What will happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Nightwing issue number 78, the beginning of the brand new Tom Taylor era. So then, as the comic opens up, we're actually treated to a flashback of Dick's time at school in Gotham. He says that bullies never really picked on him that much because, well, when you see your parents die before your eyes and when you have to go around with the name that is literally Dick, you develop a tough skin really early. However, when the will-be boy Wonder ends up seeing another kid getting hassled by a bunch of preppy bullies, he ends up stepping in. The irony is not lost on anyone, not the least of which me, that the D-bag leading the charge in this one is a spoiled rich kid whose parents, wait for it, made their money in the corrupt insurance game, specifically not paying out any of the claims they were supposed to. This is ironic, of course, because these guys made a fortune pulling the safety nets out from under people. And had the Flying Graysons been working working with a net that night, they may very well have lived. This day would end up being very important in the life of Dick Grayson for a number of reasons. One, it's the day that he ended up meeting Barbara Gordon. She had actually stepped in to try and help this kid before he did and whose cop father, Jim, helps settle this whole situation with the bullies before taking Dick back to stately Wayne Manor, where Bruce Wayne is nowhere to be found, no doubt doing important Batman business somewhere else. That means it's just Dick and Alfred, and we actually get a really interesting light shone on their unique relationship in this issue. Dick actually helps Alfred do the dishes, even though the butler is literally paid to do just that, but that's just very much in Dick's character, isn't it? He wants to help, he wants to do right, even when he's not in a costume. Flash forward to the present in Bloodhaven, and unfortunately not all that much has changed. Another gang of jock assholes is chasing down a stray dog to try and kill it for sick kicks. Night Wing intervenes, desperately trying to get caught up on everything in his city that he missed back when he had that bout of amnesia. In fact, there's a great little lampshade hanging joke wherein Dick says, I'm not going to let you shoot that dog in the head. Lord only knows what'll happen. It might forget its life. It might start calling itself Rick. Saving the dog is the easy part. Getting it to trust Nightwing enough to let him bring it to a vet is a whole other story. But from there, we actually transition on over to Mr. Desmond, a.k.a. Blockbuster, a.k.a. the Blood. Bloodhaven Gang Lord Supreme. I thought I do appreciate Taylor for realizing that Blockbuster is probably the most prominent Nightwing solo villain that they could pull out for this story to begin with. Blockbuster's having himself a clandestine meeting with the chief of police and mayor who are all very much in his pocket. It seems that profits are down in Bloodhaven in the last little bit and Desmond will not let this stand. To send a message to all of his other toadies and subordinates, Desmond kills the mayor of Bloodhaven by crushing his head with his bare hands. This means the deputy mayor, a young woman who came to the meet as well, just got promoted. And here's where things get really interesting. Blockbuster expects great things from this young woman because, well, he knows her father. He was a professional criminal too, and chances are if you know your Batman lore, you know his name too. Billy Zuko, meaning this is Melina Zuko, his daughter, not to be confused with Sonya Zuko. I guess old Mr. Zuko got around and has more daughters than we thought he did. Now back over with Dick, he fixes the dog up and returns home to his new base of opera operations, an apartment building that he managed to purchase all of back during the last time he had money. The location is great and so is the rent, but the security could certainly do some work as Barbara Gordon, aka Batgirl, aka Oracle, was able to breach the perimeter with no problem. Supposedly, this series is actually supposed to focus a lot on the relationship between Dick and Babs, and it's certainly cool to see them together and on such good terms again here. In fact, that's a lot of the reason why Barbara has come to him now. You'll remember the whole Bat family had come together to read the will of Alfred not so long ago, but Dick wasn't really himself at the time, and as such, Barbara actually waited to give him what Alfred had left. In a truly heartwarming letter, Alfred says just how much Dick meant to him, saying that he was every bit as much a son to him as Bruce was. And that he just so happens to be leaving him his entire fortune. Yeah, that's right. Alfred was loaded when he died. Not only did he get a ton of money when the Waynes originally died, but he basically never touched any of it, getting to live rent-free in Wayne Manor, and he's only been investing and saving ever since, meaning a rather substantial nest egg is now left to Nightwing. 
Which, if you're following along with all the other Batman Gotham-centric books, you'll know this officially means Nightwing is richer than Batman now. And imagine what someone like Dick could do, someone with such a good heart, someone who was always a hero inside the costume and outside of it could do now that he has this kind of money. The only thing that possibly could stop him is a new mayor with an axe to grind, because as the comic winds down, we see that Zuko's daughter actually very much is keeping tabs on Nightwing, and she just just so happens to have a poster for the Flying Graysons. Well now, isn't that an interesting turn of events? And so that was Nightwing issue number 78, everybody, and I must say Tom Taylor delivered pretty much exactly the story I was hoping for him to. Nightwing and Bloodhaven are given a fresh start and a great chance for new people to jump onto the series with, while also honoring much of what came before, offering up some new stuff and some retcons. Promising that Barbara will be a bigger part of this series, too, which is pretty good considering as it stands right now, she doesn't have her own solo title. Making lemonade out of lemons out of the more controversial things to have happened in Nightwing's publication history in the last couple of years, like the whole amnesia bit and the death of Alfred. And wrapping it all in a beautiful looking Bruno Redondo package. Love what this guy does with colors here. He really manages to summon up feelings depending on what the lighting is. I give this one a very well deserved it 8 out of 10. Nightwing's back and it feels so good. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Cape Jewel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind the scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and you know help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw so i want to thank you all and i will see you again next time bye bye